Sirens blare as the fire truck screeches to a halt in front of a restaurant. You and your team don breathing masks and rush into the building. But when you open the door, it's not smoke that billows out. Instead, something far more dangerous and far less visible. Once inside, you evacuate patrons and staff from the building. As they do, a staff member with bloodshot eyes informs you in between coughs that there's still one person unaccounted for, and the last time they saw him, he was headed to the kitchen. You rush towards the kitchen and burst through the doors to find a man incapacitated on the floor near a puddle of bubbling green liquid. Questions immediately rush to your mind. Was he responsible for this? What on earth is that stuff on the floor? And how was it capable of clearing out an entire building? You rush into action, carrying the man to the ambulance outside, while the rest of your team quickly quarantine the area as the hazmats arrive to investigate. And it's not long before they find out what that strange liquid in the kitchen is. It's a chemical weapon. And the man who made it was now in the hospital fighting for his life, his lungs slowly being eaten from the inside out. On November 7th, 2019, 32-year-old Ryan Baldera started his day like any other and said goodbye to his wife and three-month-old son before heading to the Buffalo Wild Wings in Burlington, Massachusetts, where he worked as the general manager. Only, it would turn out to be far from a regular day for Ryan, one that instead would end in tragedy. He had been going about his shift as usual when he was notified of an emergency in the kitchen. There was a mess of liquid on the floor that smelled so pungent it immediately made him gag. He had no idea what the liquid was, but it was obviously dangerous. And with the dinner rush imminent, he knew he needed to work quickly. Using a squeegee, Ryan began pushing the liquids from the kitchen to an outside drain. Little did he know that by doing this, he was actually causing the liquid to go from dangerous to deadly, as the invisible toxic gas emanating from it began seeping out of the kitchen into the restaurant's dining area. Jim Jorfis, who was in the restaurant with his co-workers at the time of the incident, said, We were just sitting at the bar. The smell of ammonia and chlorine came over us, and a bunch of people started coughing. At first, Jim thought the smell was coming from a strong cleaner within the dishwasher. But then, it got stronger and stronger, he said. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, Ryan, now coughing and wheezing, continued working hard to clean up the spill as a burning tightness grew within his chest. Determined to protect the well-being of the restaurant's patrons and staff, Ryan powered through, pushing as much liquid as he could towards the drain, even as it became harder and harder for him to breathe. Eventually, it became clear that the situation was more than the staff could handle. When firefighters arrived, they issued an evacuation and declared a Tier 1 hazardous material response to the toxic gas that had now contaminated the entire building. But Ryan had become incapacitated from the noxious fumes and was immediately rushed to nearby Leahy Hospital and Medical Center where doctors fought to save his life. Thirteen others who were in the restaurant at the time were also hospitalized from their short exposure to the toxic air with symptoms like having difficulty breathing and burning eyes. But what kind of a spill could have had such severe consequences? Well, an investigation back at the restaurant revealed that the spill was a mixture of cleaning supplies and that by trying to clean it up, Ryan had inadvertently created a deadly chemical reaction on the kitchen floor. According to fire officials who were dispatched to the scene, a preliminary investigation revealed that a second employee had applied two substances, Super 8 and Scale Clean, to the kitchen floor while attempting to clean it. The two substances reacted with one another, creating toxic fumes. But as the investigation progressed, Burlington Fire Department Assistant Chief Michael Patterson revealed that one employee may have accidentally spilled the scale clean, and then when another employee came along to clean the floor, they were unaware of the previous spill and inadvertently mixed Super 8 with the still lingering substance. Regardless of the exact series of events, it is clear that it was both accidental and extremely deadly. The makers of both of these cleaners, Autoclor, describe Scale Clean as a concentrated, highly acidic detergent, and Super 8 as low-temp sodium hypochlorite solution for sanitization in the food processing and food service industry. That's a good question, my wee friend. Sodium hypochlorite is just a fancy word some companies use in place of the word bleach. That's right. 
bleach, that everyday household cleaner that we are by no means ever supposed to combine with anything other than water, let alone a highly acidic substance like Scale Clean. Of course, we should never mix any cleaners, but in this particular case, Neil Langerman, CEO and Principal Scientist at Advanced Chemical Safety, said that the reaction of the two cleaners coming in contact with one another would have created chlorine gas, adding that the reaction would have been well-known, simple, instantaneous. The green bubbles give it away. Bro, it may be noteworthy to add that those were just the accidental cases of exposure. Since its first use by Germany in 1915, during the First World War, chlorine gas has been weaponized in various conflicts due to its potent effects. It causes severe respiratory distress and eye irritation, making it highly effective at incapacitating and inducing panic among those exposed. As of 1925, the Geneva Protocol made the use of chemical weapons banned under international law and, in turn, a war crime. Thanks, Howard. But back to the accidental mixture in the Buffalo Wild Wings kitchen. Upon seeing the situation in the kitchen, Ryan had unfortunately got to work trying to remove it and unintentionally intensified the reaction. Even though it was for a short time, Ryan's exposure to the chlorine gas would have led to some pretty serious reactions inside his body. When he breathed it in, the chloride would have reacted with the moisture in his respiratory tract, forming hydrochloric and hypochlorous acid, among other harmful compounds. The reaction caused his lungs to swell up and become inflamed, making it extremely hard for him to breathe. But this accidental combination resulting in chlorine gas isn't a one-off, not even close. In 2020 alone, the American Association of Poison Control Centers reported 4,673 cases of household acid being mixed with a bleach-like substance leading to chlorine gas exposure. And in 2018, a woman from England named Dominique Heath faced a frightening situation when she inadvertently created chlorine gas while trying to unclog her toilet. The incident started when she used a product called One Shot to tackle a blockage she suspected was caused by her children using too much toilet paper. Later, with the blockage still unresolved, she added a three liter tub of bleach, hoping it would clear the problem. This combination started a chemical reaction, releasing chlorine gas into her home. Heath quickly realized the danger when she began to feel a burning sensation in her eyes and throat, prompting her to act. She quickly isolated the bathroom, opened up all the windows, and sought help from her neighbor before calling the fire department. The severity of the situation escalated to the point where firefighters had to wear special breathing apparatus in order to enter her home and remove the gas. The street was even cordoned off as a precaution, and Dominique and her family weren't allowed back into the home until 5 a.m. the following morning. It was really serious. We are all okay, but it was the dumbest thing I have ever done. Please don't do this, she said about the ordeal. It shows just how dangerous seemingly harmless household cleaning products can be if used incorrectly. And it's lucky that no one was hurt. Sadly, the same cannot be said of our original case at Buffalo Wild Wings. There is nothing I could find documenting exactly what happened to Ryan when he arrived at the hospital, but I have to assume that doctors did everything they could to help him. Their efforts probably involved giving him oxygen and opening up his airways to help him breathe better, but in the end, the lung injury sustained from the chlorine gas must have been too severe. Unfortunately, oxygen deprivation can cause irreversible damage to the body. All hospital staff could do was keep Ryan comfortable until he passed away not long after arriving at the hospital. After his death, Ryan was hailed as a hero for his willingness to protect those around him. While devastated at this unimaginable loss, we are so very proud that Ryan died while trying to protect his fellow employees and restaurant patrons, his family said. This case is a stark reminder that when working with harsh chemicals, you should do it in well-ventilated areas, always read labels, and as a ground rule, never mix cleaning solutions together. And if you found this video informative and want to help us keep making more, hit the subscribe button. Not only is it the best way to support us, but you'll also never miss another video. Like this one, about how a skin cream sold at Walmart turned a woman's entire body into a chemical weapon that sent 23 people into the emergency room. Until next time, stay safe out there, folks.